Hey, singers from the Hidden Level Share with part 2 of walkthrough for fragments of him. This walkthrough covers uh, Will's grandmother's chapter, which uh, her name is Mary. Um, goes from it starts from uh, when Will was very young and why she, he is living with his grandmother is covered and what um back in the 1980s how what their relationship is like and uh like their christmas and stuff like that are covered throughout this course of the action uh, because the game is all about the narrative i am not going to be talking through this entire video i'll just leave you to watch it uh, i hope you enjoy it she always had a nose in a magazine full of pictures it's not the way to inspire a young man to a career, if you ask me. James loves such peculiar books, all those horror things. That one about the rats, dreadful things, really. I don't know what he saw in them. Sharon had some problems with the birth, so Will was an only child growing up. He played by himself a lot. That plant was about all Will saw of the outside when he was young. He preferred to make up stories rather than play outdoors. Sharon, Will's mother, met my James when he was working in London. She's American. They broke up for three years, and she took Will to America with her. James and Sharon would always be putting on some awful music, if you can call it that. Not my cup of tea at all. I turned it off first thing whenever I was babysitting. I suppose I sound old-fashioned, but there are appropriate ways to raise a child. I only wanted Will to grow up happy and normal. I remember an evening where Will was quieter than usual. At first I thought he was ill. He had been in a fight at school. Another boy had been calling a girl names because she had dark skin. Will told the boy to stop and he was punched in the stomach. I asked him if he had cried and he said yes. I told him that big boys don't cry. I remember him asking me then what do big boys do when they're sad? I told him that when he grew up, he would be a good man, able to stand up for others. I suppose I didn't answer his question. He had done the right thing, I told him, even though it hurt him that time. Now I think about this, he didn't seem much happier. What should I have said? Will tripped over his toy van when he was going to bed. I remember carrying him. He was trying so hard not to cry. He was so small in my arms. I've never forgotten that feeling. I have so many little memories making up our lives together. It's odd what sticks with you, though. I took him to bed to read him a story. Sharon kept on buying him books of ghost stories. He always wanted me to read him those. 
but he never slept properly after, I think. He would never settle properly until I had checked the room for ghosts. I made sure he could see me looking carefully. I remember that night clearly. I remember promising him that I would always protect him, no matter whatever happened. Of course, he was thinking of ghosts still, but maybe I knew then that his life wasn't going to be so easy. I was reading Grimm's fairy tales to him. I liked those much more than the new versions that they kept on coming out with back then. It was a strange story that night, called The Ungrateful Son. It went something like this. Once upon a time, a man and his wife were eating a roast chicken for dinner. When the man saw his father, a very old man, walking along the road towards them, the man didn't want to share his chicken, so he hid it out of sight. The man's father arrived, bid them good day, and continued on his way. The man was happy with himself, told his wife to get the chicken and put it on the table again. But the chicken had transformed into a giant toad, which leapt onto the face of the man. The toad would never leave, and when his wife wanted to help, she was so afraid of it that she dared not go near. The man had to feed the toad every day from then on, or it would bite his face, and he never rested for the remainder of his life. Like I say, it was a very strange story. Will was asleep before I finished it, which was probably a good thing. I felt strange after reading it. I wondered about whether I really could keep him safe. The world is so unpredictable. I will do my best like all good grandmothers. I could still see him sleeping there now, like it was only yesterday. I had raised James, so I thought I would be ready for anything from my grandson Will. But I wasn't daft enough to think that it would be easy. The world changes so fast. I remember the family visiting me when Will was a teenager. Did you ever hear the song? Here in my heart. That was playing when Robert first kissed me. Al Martino had a beautiful voice. They don't sing like that anymore. Such a shame. My husband Robert was a writer, like Will. I think they would have loved talking. Maybe Will's interest would have inspired Robert to push a bit harder in his work. I started a small collection of glass animals many years ago. I would buy a new one whenever I went to Brighton. 
It's good to get out of the house, enjoy the fresh sea air. I went to visit family in New Zealand after James left home. It was a very long trip. I could only make it once. It's such a shame to be so distant from family. We were all waiting back then for Diana to divorce Charles. It had been such a scandal after that television interview that she did. People seem to believe that all us old folk want to talk about is the weather. So I started the conversation. I think it's sad. She was bullied into all of this from the beginning. The rest of the conversation didn't go well. Will frustrated me so much. I told you before that Sharon is American. She didn't say anything, which was probably a blessing, really. James didn't help. He has always been so obtuse in his views. I wish I hadn't even tried. They didn't want to hear my views. I said that I was going to make some tea. No one offered to help. Was it childish? I don't think any of us wanted tea, but I didn't want to talk to them anymore. I suppose all this seems like a strange thing to remember, but it was a sad day for me. I didn't have any choice in my time, but I had a quiet life. It was good enough. It's easier to be different now, but all he could see was the need of one person at the risk to everything else. James and Sharon were both adults, but Will... I was worried about him getting all these views. It could get him into trouble. I wish Will understood that you've got to fit in to get along in life. Will was only at the start of his life, but those years are so important. I wanted him to keep his head down, not start arguments. I stood there, waiting for the tea to brew. And I cried for him. He was young, but he was old enough too. He was going to make mistakes and I wouldn't be able to stop him. I knew something had been broken that day between Will and I. I took a deep breath and pulled myself together. It's not the dumb thing to let others see you get upset. I've lived alone since a little time after Will was born. That was when Robert passed away. I missed him, of course. Yet it was tolerable until then. But then, after we disagreed, I felt so distant from them all. It was terrible. My generation has different values. Oh, goodness, I know that. But I very much believe that they are good. I wasn't prepared to accept that Will wasn't going to talk to me anymore. His views. I felt he was putting his future at risk. All these free ideas about people choosing their own way to live, he would understand later. But how much later? But before he changed, what damage would he do to his options? I was nervous about that Christmas. 
We haven't been close for a while. I was down in the dumps, to be honest. It was good to keep busy making the place look nice. Will went off to university, but I clearly remember the Christmas that he and the family came home. It's important to keep in touch with your friends. We didn't have the internet back then. I wish people still wrote letters. I wanted the house to look perfect. Will was going to bring a girlfriend, Sarah, and I wanted her to get the right impression. My family arrived just as the Christmas lunch was ready. It was perfect timing. I was very worried about seeing Will. I wanted him to understand that when we disagreed, I didn't mean anything against him personally. I just wanted to keep him safe. Sarah was lovely, of course. She was a bit shy back then, I think. We talked about her university courses. She really had no reason to be nervous. When Sharon took Will to America, he was only 10. Like most boys, he wasn't much of a letter writer. She took him away from us for three years, and I barely saw him. James is like his father, really. A wonderful boy. But I do wish he would apply himself more. Will was growing up to be such a fine man. He was so courteous and attentive. It filled me with pride and hope to see him that day. He was becoming the man I had hoped he would be. With Sarah, I hoped he would be on track to a normal life. But that was the last time I saw her. The next summer, I went to visit Will at university. I always like to arrive on time, it's just polite. So I had left plenty of time for the drive down to see him. I arrived early and decided to have a look at the campus. It was my first time there and the buildings looked lovely. There were so many young people there, all full of life and excited about the future. Lots of beautiful girls around and I was hoping I might spot Sarah. University wasn't a normal option for people in my time, and I never went. A solid education helps to improve a person. I noticed Will from a distance. I've always thought he stood out in a crowd. At first, I couldn't see what he was doing. Then I saw 
that he was holding hands with a man. And then they kissed right there, out in the open. After everything I had tried to teach him, he went and did that. I couldn't believe it. I knew those views of his would get him in trouble. I left right away. I couldn't think of a single thing I could say to him. Will hadn't seen me. I simply had no idea how I could be expected to act like everything would be okay for him. He was so young. He didn't see the trouble he could get into if he kept doing that sort of thing. The university suddenly seemed like a place full of smug, self-satisfied people. Ugly. All those petty children doing whatever they wanted, ignoring the responsibility of the freedoms my generation got for them. I could barely stay civil with anyone there. He had made me furious. He was putting himself in danger after everything I had done for him. That sort of thing. It all just feels wrong to me. Sorry, but that's just the way I feel about this. I barely saw Will for the next few years. I couldn't bring myself to talk to him. Looking back, it was silly. He had gone travelling after university, and I stayed at my house. I said that my husband Robert had died when Will was young, didn't I? It's sometimes hard not to live in the past when you have so much time to yourself. such hopes for Will, and all the things that he would be when he was a man. I don't know if he knew how much I loved him when he was growing up. He was such a happy, playful boy. And then he changed. Life goes on. I was working in the garden. Things go wild if you leave them too long. Will have been travelling the world. I would very occasionally get a postcard from somewhere foreign. This was before he went into the travel journalism. I worried about him so much.
How could he be happy when he wouldn't settle down? All he wanted was constant change. Everything needed to be new all the time for him. I was going to answer it, but snagged my foot in the grass and twisted my ankle. It hurt like blazes, and I lay there feeling like a complete fool. There was nothing I could do. I tried to move, but it hurt too much. I called out for help. I heard footsteps around the side of the house. Will had come to visit after coming back from traveling. I had been so cold to him, never reaching out, but that didn't matter to him. He looked after me anyway. I saw inside the man he was, the same kind boy that I knew. I don't claim that I'll ever fully be able to approve of some things. But I had missed something. Distracted by just one part of him, I missed that he was the kind, strong, loving man I had always wanted him to be the best sort of man. He was even kind to a fool like me. I'll never forget that. So much changed since Grandma was young. She loves me and knows that I love Harry. I think she's starting to get that, but it's a leap for her. She kept on telling me what a real man should be like. That's not me. But I think I'm okay. I'm the man I grew up to be. And now I'm thinking about marrying Harry. But Harry just wants this, this normal life. These patterns. He kept a place for me here while I explored the world. That's good, right? That's love. Isn't it? <sighs> I need to get ready for the day. Right, uh, we are nearing the end of uh, Mary's section here, and the next section, which will be uh, Will's girlfriend, Sarah. We it's begin. Uh, thank you for watching. My name is Sangrias from the Hidden Levels. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. 
check us on our YouTube, our Twitch, twitch.tv slash The Hidden Levels, on our website, www.thehiddenlevels.com. And I'll be back with the next part of this video.